Hi everyone, it's James here. How are you all doing? Welcome to another video. So uh, there's been a couple of threads going around recently about female artists. Uh, Richard McCook did a good thread, started a good thread about which 10 female uh, records would you take to a desert island. Saw a few nice responses to that. John Downing did another one which was, I think it was a response to Richard and it was to do with um, soul singers, female soul singers. Now I'm going to do a response to that video as well. Uh, but I wanted to jump in and do this one, which is like another sort of angle on it. I'm going to show some records where <clears throat> there's a band and there's only one female member of the band and the female member is the front person, the star of the band really. So uh, I'm not going to look at the Pixies or Sonic Youth or those groups where there's one female but they're not necessarily the front person. And I'm not going to look at bands like ABBA and you know, whatever, you know, Fleetwood Mac, where there's more than one woman. I'm just going to look at bands where it's all men, apart from one woman, and she is at the front. The first one is actually quite funny because uh, it must be difficult, you know, to be a band of guys with a female at the front. But particularly, I mean, this group, this band was not even the group that featured on the record. Uh, this is Kim Wilde, her first album. Um, so the band that she actually had on the record uh, was not these guys. So even to be in, in Kim Wilde's band was not a great deal because this wasn't really like Blondie. This, I mean, she was billed as Kim Wilde, but she had this group behind her, and um, yeah. I mean that's not them anyway, you know. So a um, bit of a strange fate. There's another sort of subcategory of groups uh, where you've got a female front person, but she's given star billing and then the band name comes separately so an example would be this this is uh, Janis Joplin and her album Pearl and uh, this is the album that came out just shortly after her death and on this record she was supported by this brilliant band Full Tilt Boogie but it's fairly obviously a Janis Joplin album and she's just got this band behind her this one slightly more ambiguous this is uh, Shaka Khan and Rufus now, she was actually a member of the group, uh, it's just that she was given a separate billing and apparently it did cause some problems in the band. She was just a member of the group and she was the singer uh, and yet she was given a separate uh, credit. A bit like in these movies where you get uh, you know, a star billing but then the film also features someone else. It's quite interesting. So, yeah. Now, all the others are groups where there's no separate billing for the woman singer or the woman front person or the songwriter who is the female of the group she's just one of the bands so let's whiz through a few there are loads more i've missed out loads so that other, you know other people can show them but also i don't have them on vinyl or i don't have them at all uh you know there's quite a lot this is quite an obvious one this is altered images uh, who are all men apart from uh, claire grogan there she is there wolf in ice cream i think Fantastic kind of sparkly, um, although slightly left field actually. This album has got some slightly sort of post-punkish elements to it. They became more of a pop band later on. Claire Grogan, of course, went on to be an actress, actor, and uh, she also, I think she had a job as a presenter on MTV for a while, didn't she? Or was it VH1? One of those channels. <clears throat> right, a couple of big beasts now. Of course, we have The Pretenders. And there were several lineups of the Pretenders, and it was never really. I think it was a band originally. Of course, <clears throat> a couple of the guys from this lineup uh, died. I think after the was it after the second album, and she basically she replaced the group. Um, but now, I mean nowadays she she just operates uh, as herself. Really, she's a solo star, but she calls her records the Pretenders. So you know she kind of it's turned into a brand really. Uh, but of course she was a very obvious focal point for the group and um, you know I mean this is a, a really really similar but perhaps an even more dramatic example it's difficult to imagine isn't it it is difficult to imagine Blondie as an all men group it sounds a bit banal to say it but I mean there were lots of bands around at the time who were all men you know there was Squeeze there was The Police there was Madness Blondie were definitely something different along with The Pretenders because you just had this extremely sharp contrast I mean such a great album cover all the men in the black suits and Debbie there in her white dress um, she really kind of she was such a magnetic person to have in the group and you know she she wasn't just eye candy obviously she was a great singer she was a songwriter so well, I always thought quite a difficult job being the guys in Blondie it's interesting to reflect when people used to come and see Blondie how many of the people who used to come to see Blondie came 
to see the men or did they just come to see Debbie Harry? Um, I honestly don't know, you know. She obviously had a massive uh, fan following. How many people could name any other members of Blondie? I mean, Chris Stein, you know, reasonably well known, but she far and away outflanked them. This is some BCLT I received uh, recently from John Downing, Six Inch Pianist. This is uh, X-ray specs. Now, um, polystyrene, she was um, the only girl in the group um, once they started recording. There was another girl in the group before they got their record contract, uh, whose name escapes me. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, but they were kind of interesting because they were one of the first sort of UK punk bands, really. Uh, but she was an, a notable example of a female coming up in a, in a front person capacity. Um, this is a lady I showed quite recently. I showed one of her solo albums. This is Maggie Bell, uh, who was in uh, Stone the Crows. She was a singer of Stone the Crows. And you can see on the back there, it's all men, uh, apart from her. That's her there. There's Jimmy McCulloch, who would later go on to be in Wings, or maybe he'd been in Wings already, I never quite remember. So they were a Scottish uh, white blue eyed soul band. Uh, and this is their record, uh, Continuous Performance. She had a very whiskey soaked voice for a sort of uh, Janis Joplin kind of style. Okay, moving forward into the 1980s, we have uh, 10,000 Maniacs and. Uh, they were led from the front uh, by the amazing Natalie Merchant, uh, kind of folk rock, really, really good, really interesting songs, narrative story songs, and a very interesting voice, a very distinctive voice, quite kind of, it had a kind of sharp edge to it, it was it kind of cut through really. Uh, she was a bit of a singular talent. So uh, yeah, 10,000 Maniacs, a bunch of guys with a lady at the front. And again, this one, the fantastic and very, very talented Eddie Reader, uh, fronted Fairground Attraction, uh, who, apart from her, were all men. There they are. This is the album, uh, The First of a Million Kisses, which was their kind of big hit album, really. Had their big uh, hit song on it, uh, Perfect. To finish, uh, moving into kind of R&B territory, this is uh, Rose Royce, who were all men, apart from the singer Gwen Dickey who uh, gave a couple of, well, one truly, you know, immortal performance when she did uh, Love Don't Live Here Anymore, which is one of the great, great, I mean, you call it disco, but it was more kind of, I don't know, that sort of pop soul, amazingly powerful performance, but, you know, she also sang Car on Car Wash and um, Wishing on a Star, which is uh, a beautiful song. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back soon to hopefully do the Soul Singers uh, version as well. So take care folks. <clears throat> I'll see you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.